So what I'll be doing in this video is sharing with you how I created this script, which is starting with the base curve, we create a base wall, a frame, then a glass section and a top frame. The reason why I created this script is to show you how to create these architectural elements using uh, geometries like base curve here in Rhino, and then create a script around it. So then you can do other things like use different type of curves and set them so let's say using this curve we can go set one curve and that entire design will be also not just done on this one but on a flowing curve it can also be one where it kind of turns a corner or even has angles so the power of parametric design is not just to save time but to be able to change all of these parameters let's say the frame size be able to change these parameters and have the design be updated therefore allowing you to see all of your options uh, before you make a decision so i'll be going over all of the steps on how to create this script so this is perfect for those of you who are new i'll also be sharing the script for free on my website for a limited time so make sure to check that out um, and if you want other resources i also have them there so thank you very much for being here and let's jump right into the tutorial So the first thing I like to do is bring in a scale person. This way we can keep in mind the scale of the design that we're going to be creating. Then we need to create a polyline that's going to be the base curve for the design. So let's start here by creating a polyline. I'll go here and just create a polyline. And I'll also make sure to include an angle. This way I know that when I create the script, it will also work with not just a polyline that is aligned in the X and Y, but one that maybe has an angle or has a feature that's a little bit different. So now with this, we can take a base curve. So I'll double click here in the free space and go to curve. This will let me bring in a curve component that I can place this polyline into. And I'll select this, right click on the curve and go to set one curve. Now let's hide the original curve and use this as our base geometry this means that any polyline that we plug in we should be able to create the design that we're going to lay out here so with this now we're going to move into offsetting it we'll go to offset curve and i'll create a offset and i'll go here to six Point zero. This way I have a slider that is from 0 to 10. It gives me one decimal point. Now I can change this to wall size. As you can see, it offsets it to the outside. So just keep that in mind that whatever the base curve is, it would be offset to the outside. We can also make it so if we bring in a negative component that it actually offsets it to the opposite side. So it depends on your base curve and which way you want to offset it. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and close it off. There are two ways of doing this. One is lofting it together that will create a surface or if we get the endpoint of both the original curve and the offset, we have both the start and end point of this curve and the start and end point of this curve. Now let's bring them together using a line component. We'll go to a line component, start point to the other start point that creates this line segment. And the next one's going to be this endpoint and this endpoint. Now I can join those curves together and create a closed polyline. So I'll go to, oh, that's a VREP join. I'll go to join curves. And I'll start with 
this one and start adding the curves to close the polyline and i'll go here at the end and go to flatten this way it ensures that it's all one list and that it closes it um, into one close polyline now if we don't flatten it let's see if it also works it says it has two curves so it's going to be not fully closed now with this we can do boundary surface which will let me create a surface right where those boundaries are and as long as we keep in mind that we when we move this that will take care of that then we can then take this and extrude it up so we'll go here to extrude we will be extruding that surface up in the z direction so unit z and i'll bring in a slider that will be 42.5 okay so now that we've created the base wall height Now we can continue on developing the top part, which is going to be glass. All right, so for this next part, we're going to take the original curve. And as you see, we offset it for the wall size. So we're going to do the same thing, but offset it halfway. So what we need to do is take this and copy it. So I slide it down, tap Alt. That creates a copy here. And then rather than using 8.9 or 10 for the distance we're actually dividing that by 2 what that does is instead of offsetting it all the way to the other side it will offset it just halfway so I'll go here to 10 divided by 2 and that will offset it right to the center so no matter what number I pick here for the wall size we're in ex the exact center of it now we can take this line and move it up to the exact height here. So now, since we already have the height of the wall, we're using this component, and we can use that component again. So we can use the move component, use that same Z vector, and then use the baseline to move the geometry up. So what that does is now we can hide this one that's down here, and since it's tied to both this one and this one when it offsets it it'll be halfway and also move it halfway up or all the way up to the top why because now we can use this curve or this line to continue developing the wall here so what we'll do is take this curve and then create the bottom frame so i'll take this and offset it I'll offset curve and I'll go 1.50. What I do is whenever I use a decimal point, it will actually create the slider with that many, that tolerance. And so that's useful. So we can offset this to one side. And then since we have this in the middle, we also want to copy this and offset it to the other side. So to do that, we'll go to a negative component. And now this will be positive 1.5 this will be negative 1.5 which in total is actually 3 so what we need to do is take this and do say go to 3 here and do divided by 2 this will make it that this is 3 inches wide so basically anytime you are centered and you offset to each side you need to divide by two to get the true overall size. Okay, now that we have these two, we can, let's see. First, double click here so we can get a relay. And this way we can copy this because we want to create another offset that is a little bit narrower that will be the glass. But for now, we'll take these two 
And we can use the same idea here where we offset it, get the endpoints, and join them together. So we can use this line of thinking, or we can also loft it together, which will create. A surface between those two offsets. Now, the only thing that's kind of critical for this, and even the one below here, is that the for the original polyline to be planar, which means it has to be on one plane. If it starts moving up and down, then it will not work. So now, what we need to do with this loft is extrude it up to create the bottom frame. So I'll go to extrude direction in the z direction so up and we want to extrude this by we'll just say 3.5 i also want to show you how to create a custom slider so here's one frame now what i want to do is the same thing that we did here but we want to do it with a narrow one here on the inside so what we'll do is move this down here i'll take this part of the script which is basically taking a curve offsetting it and creating a loft this is going to be frame one and we'll copy this and we'll call this glass so now we have another one created but it's let's zoom in here and to scroll in like this i use control and right click and then move your mouse and you can get a little bit closer So I'm hiding all of that and hiding the curves and showing you that that is going to be the glass size. So what we need to do now is move this up to the top of this location. So let's do that. Let's go and get a move component. We will bring in the loft into the move component and plug in the Z vector into the motion. As you can see, it'll move it exactly to that location and it will tie it to the height. Now, when you have glass like this, it usually goes down into the frame to hold the glass. So what we need to do now is, now that we've moved it up, we actually need to subtract a little bit this way we can subtract it from the frame so one way to do this is to take a subtraction to do a minus sign now i'll create a custom slider like this zero dot 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 Hmm. less than you could do dot 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 but if you have a decimal point like 0. 0.5 then you can't do that and then less than let's see 2.5 so it will create a slider that is custom from 0 to 2.5 and puts it at 0. 0.5 why because we want to take this height and you can add and subtract vectors, by the way. So this is where we'll bring in the unit Z and subtract 2 from 5. So 2 is the overall height. Subtract 0. 0.5. And this will be the Z vector. So now whenever we go to 0, it'll be flush or it can be recessed into the frame. Now we can take this glass and extrude it by a certain height. Let's take a 
This is frame one. Frame one height. And this is going to be um, frame glass offset. So now we'll take this and copy it because that's an extrude component with the Z vector already copied. If I make that copy, all I need to do is change the name and plug in the glass into it. Now the only thing that's going to be different is going to be slider. So now we can either edit it here. We'll go to max of 48. We'll just go to 24 for the height. Now what I want to do is take this and subtract it from so we'll preview this. Now we'll go do a difference. So Boolean or solid difference. And we'll use that extrusion as BRF A and BRF B is going to be the glass. So now we have the base frame, the glass. Now we're going to be creating the top frame. But the top frame is nothing more than the bottom frame mirrored to the top. So what we can do is get the midpoint of this height and mirror this object above. So the way to do that, we need to get the centroid, which is the geometric center of this object. So that will give us a midpoint to mirror with. So let's go to an area component. So at this centroid, what we'll do is create an X, Y plane, which is this one, and then use the centroid to place it at that location. Now here with the C plane, now we can take this bottom frame and mirror it using that. So let's go to a mirror component. For a mirror component, all you need are two inputs, the plane, which is the mirror plane, and then the geometry. Now here, we have the base frame, the top frame, and what's cool is that we can type in show, bring in the base curve, and move this around. Obviously, there's going to be some limitations, but we can move this around, rotate it around, and it's going to maintain all of the steps that we took here inside of Grasshopper. So that is going to conclude the basic tutorial on how to create architectural elements using Grasshopper. And all you need is a base curve like this one. So these uh, tutorials, I make sure I show them to you guys so you see the power of parametric design. I have various tutorials and other resources here and on my website. So make sure to check that out if you would like to learn more. So thank you very much for being here. I will have this available for free uh, for a limited time. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you very much for being here and I'll see you on the next one.